Welcome everyone. Today we have the 2022 Kia EV6 for another night review. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at all these exterior lights, the interior ambient lighting, and get it out on the road for a test drive so you can see exactly what you get at night. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Let's take a look at the aesthetic of the lights on this new Kia EV6. So this is all electric. I got a full review if you wanna see all the details. But look at the daytime running lights. It's an LED daytime running light that runs all the way around the headlight. That entire piece that goes around, nice little accent around there. And then I have the blinker on over here. It cuts this headlight or the running light in half. So the top half is an LED blinker. And these, full, these are full LED high and low beam reflectors and they're standard on every trim. Take a look at this paint. This is a matte gray paint. The EV6 really gets some interesting colors here. That turn signal in the mirror is LED and that is also standard on every trim. You can see the marker lights in the front and the back and 19 inch wheels are gonna be standard with 20 inch wheels available. But what do you think? This is quite the design very futuristic looking and then moving to the back you're going to get this massive led light bar with an led turn signal that is red no amber colors back here but what do you think of this horizontal light bar design there's also a big brake light up above but let's take a look at the brake and reverse lights you'll also see the led license plate lights i'm not a huge fan of how the reverse light is at the very bottom down there but it is what it is that's kind of how hyundai and kia do it. Now if we pop that up, you've got a smart lift gate, but you can just power operate it as well. Nice bright lights shining from there for the license plate. Back here, cargo space, I'll talk about more in the full review, but just to show you, you do have one LED interior cargo light there. And most of the time I show you the sheen and the sparkle of metallic lights, but this is just pure matte with this gray. And I really like it. I'm a sucker for matte paints. Some of you don't like them, but I'd love to hear what you think. And then in here, Take a look at this. You've got some uh, suede and leather interior in here. You can even get some ambient lighting in here, which I'll show you in a little bit. But the back seat is lit up pretty well with standard LED lights. Right down there is a pretty special function. There's actually a plug-in right there. I talked more about it in the full review, but you can basically use this as like a mobile power bank to plug your items in. There are some USB plug-ins built into the seats, but they don't have any backlighting. And when this door is open, you can't see the ambient lighting, but when the door is closed, obviously, check out that ambient lighting in the door. All right, y'all, watch this. We've got the smart key system and we've got some approach lighting. So when I get close to the vehicle, you got this light that pops up right back there and it shines down to give you a little bit of accent lighting and approach lighting and your door handles will also pop out as well. But to give you a quick look at the interior here, you've got the same materials as you do up front, but you've got more ambient lighting, some nice bright, LED lights. We're gonna take a detailed look at everything in here, all the light controls as well. These seats are pretty comfortable. I haven't had any complaints, but if you want more details, check out the full review. And most EV chargers that I've seen have a light over here. This doesn't actually shine a light on the plug. When this is in your face, it's actually kind of hard to see the plug. I'm surprised there's not a little light over here, but just so you know. All right, y'all, we are inside. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna shut these lights off. Got push button start. The weird thing is that the remote start light does not light up, which is unusual, but this glows and lights up like crazy. Once you get in here, I really like it. There's some cool stuff that I'm gonna show you, but first of all, over on the door, all your buttons and switches, memory settings are illuminated, locks, window switches, mirror controls, and even some ambient lighting in the door. The whole door pocket lights up. A Little bit down by my feet, over here you have some more controls, parking brake, into your brightness control. So for example, if I push that, the illumination is at its lowest right now. And then I'm gonna turn it up. And that brightens both that screen and that screen, as well as these little buttons in here, like on the steering wheel. So those brighten and, we and dim too. So I like having full control over all of these buttons in here. Steering wheel has some nice kind of whitish illumination here. Uh, all your radio controls, cruise control, things like that. And then this display is actually standard. So this is pretty cool. You can control everything with your steering wheel, go to different pages. It's not fully customizable, like where you can have different information on each side. It's similar to other Hyundai Kia systems with the same kind of information in the middle, but I still like it quite a bit. It does change a little with drive modes and you can just, you can determine if one of those, for example, is there all the time. 
Right overhead, you've got a head-up display. You can even get an augmented reality head-up display, which is more like 3D. Another thing up here in this display is the blind view monitor. So you've got the camera on the left for the signal and it shows up over there. You also have the surround view monitor that works pretty well. I'm in a pretty dark spot right here, but you can still see okay around you. Now this 12.3 inch screen is standard on all of these Kia EV6s. You've got the standard setup for Kia with their display, and then you can do the entire display for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it has to be wired in. It is not wireless. And coming down here, look at this ambient lighting. I'll go through some of the light controls and more in just a second. Got the same kind of backlighting right here. This setup is a little bit annoying because it toggles between your radio controls, map controls, etc., and your climate control. So you could accidentally, you know, think you're gonna turn up the volume, say it's on volume, say, or say it's on AC, you're gonna wanna turn up the volume without looking, but you accidentally turn up your heat or vice versa. Just something you have to kind of pay attention to. You've got heated seats, ventilated seats, all those climate controlled settings here. And then you've got this nice ambient lighting running around. This button is illuminated now, but it's not when you go to start it, which is weird. This ring around here looks pretty nice. A couple of well-lit buttons. There's no lighting that comes down from above. So this area just kind of relies on the glow here. Let me turn this on so you can see. Wireless charging mat, a couple of cup holders interesting armrest and then pretty big area right here but there's no light inside of it the glove box is well illuminated though and soft opening that's also an automatic dimming rear view mirror with uh, garage controls on this particular model right here you've got a vanity light and mirror and then overhead you get led interior light standard so you have these individual little lights here that are touch sensitive otherwise if you turn everything on you've got this light right here and i do have one complaint here is that those lights don't really help you in some areas like for example down here there's no ambient lighting down there there's a couple of plug-ins but there's a shelf down here or sorry not ambient lighting there's no lighting in this center console at all so for example that's what we're missing we just can't see anything down there it's minor but something to keep in mind now let's go look at the actual light control so go to settings and then or setup then go to vehicle and let's go down here to lights. There's a couple of really cool things. So first of all, ambient light. You've got different brightness that you can choose. I have it brightened up all the way. You can even have it dim in the dark or whatever your drive mode is. So for example, this is with it at its brightest and the camera kind of picks it up, makes it look a little bit brighter, but this is the brightest. And this is at the dimmest, so things are definitely dimmed down. You can have it automatically dim from a brighter scenario. Otherwise, you can turn it completely off too. There's also several colors that you can toggle through on here. So look at this, and it lights up pretty much all areas of this front part of the vehicle. And you can even do a custom color, which is pretty cool. Right now I have it on like a purpley color. It looks more blue on here. Let me go to something else here. Let's go to like a red color. Okay, got like a reddish, slightly pinkish color, just to give you an idea. And again, it's on the dim setting right now. The other thing, if you go to display, this is another thing I really like about Kia and Hyundai, is that it has a blue light filter. So if you've never heard of it, do some research on blue light and the stimulation from that. Your phones have settings to do this too, but you can have it automatically filter out some blue light. You can customize it a little bit, but it's just a really nice feature. And by the way, the ambient lighting starts on this GT line trim, so not on the lower trim, something to keep in mind. Now let's take a look at the actual headlight beam pattern. So there's no fog lights on here. There's no adaptive lights. It's not the most like bona fide beam pattern. It's kind of interesting. It's not the strongest going off to the sides. It's got decent height from what it seems like. Now, if I turn the high beams on, just a straight bright spot in the middle, and then there's no cornering lights, nothing like that. It's kind of dim off into the peripheral. So something to keep in mind, and there's no IIHS ratings at this time. All right, y'all, we are on a test drive in this Kia EV6 at night, and this test drive is not about the driving impression so much, it's about what it's like to drive at night in terms of the lighting, how well we can see, the automatic high beams. This does have automatic high beams. You can just flick the high beams on, they'll be in automatic mode, or you can turn your dial for your lights and actually make it 
um, you know, manual lights too. Let me put us in sport mode, give us a little uh, zinger here, pedal down. And this is the GT line. So we've got a bigger battery. We've got just a rear wheel drive here to where it's not as fast as the all wheel drive, but it's still got some good get up and go, some nice zip. And the electric torque is also nice. Check out the full review if you wanna see that. But what do you think of the ambient lighting in here? The overall ambiance and just the, the way everything is laid out. I like the lights, I like the way everything looks. We don't have automatic dimming side mirrors, but we do have an automatic dimming rear view mirror right here. Uh, most of the buttons, the buttons are pretty minimal because it's just kind of on this little screen here. Um, but the steering wheel controls, you know, all of that has a white backlight, whereas some people prefer a blue or a red. What would you like? So, so far the automatic high beams have stayed off, you know, to where they've stayed on low beams because we've got overhead lights and we've got a vehicle in front of us. We'll get on a dark road, do some corners and see how everything looks. All right, we're now just getting on a dark road. Hopefully no traffic, maybe test out the automatic high beams if we do get somebody, but the high beams just turned on the automatic high beams once you get to a certain speed and high beam wise it lights up this road pretty well maybe not quite as good as what some do let's level out let me turn the low beams on now and i think these low beams actually seem to not reach quite as far as what some others do there's no cornering function no adaptive function and it doesn't look particularly great going around the corner to the left i'm turning the high beams on now as we straighten out, let's see how far we can reach. So I can definitely see reflections from a long ways away with the high beams, but it's not super bright down there. Okay, low beams here. One thing I like is that it's not a strict, strict cutoff line where you still have a little bit of light going up so you can see the reflectors, but the actual amount or distance that you can see with the lights is not that great, especially going around corners. Let me turn the automatic high beams on again. The high beams are definitely very narrow. So if you do a lot of corners at highway driving, not the best, not ideal. Now these lights aren't bad and they don't have IIHS ratings, so I can't really base it off of that. But just from my experience, the high beam stayed on with that overhead light though. But let me turn them off. So just the low beams here, peripheral distance is not very good. It does not cover the ditch very well and does not go very wide. There's no fog lights to help with that either. High beams back on. The high beams definitely have good height. I mean, they're lighting up the tree up there, but I'm not super impressed with these lights so far. I think most of you are probably gonna be fine with them, but I wish the distance was a little bit better, especially with the low beams and better width. If you're coming from some halogen lights or some old lights, you're gonna love these lights. The automatic high beams just turn back on. Now, let me do the low beams. I mean, do you see what I mean? There's not the best distance with these low beams. I think it's actually okay. I mean, it's just, it is so hard to tell sometimes. But I'm gonna go around a couple little short corners here. Okay, this is a new part of what I like to do. I'm gonna turn the high beams on, you can see the tower. To the left, you can't see the road hardly at all. So if I come around, you can see how dark it is, and then you can see what we've been missing. And then same thing, to the right, pretty dark, pretty dark. There's definitely no good cornering light. I wish we had some cornering light, but let me know what you think. I definitely like the ambiance in here, the different ambient light colors that we can do. Leave your thoughts below, and if you liked this video, be sure to watch out for the full review. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and have a great night.